wonderful lecture. It was very knowledgeable lecture on the meta materials, and I wish again and request him that to deliver the, with the same pitch and the same depth. The students will enjoy. I am pretty sure that the students will enjoy while listening your lecture. I welcome you, sir. Okay, I welcome Amit Kumar Singh. I am just reading the brief profile. In the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT. Hello. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he worked as a postdoctoral researcher in Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, Republic of Korea, from November 2018 to February 2020. He did his PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, in 2018. Doctor Singh has authored or co-authored over 35 refereed. refereed Journal conference articles. Dr. Singh is recognized by Wiley USA as the author of the top downloaded paper in 2018-19. He is a recipient of Brain Korea 21 Fellowship 2019 for excellence in research. He is also recipient of G Core 2019 Fellowship by for Open Research with Enterprise KAIST Korea. He is serving as a regular reviewer in journals such as IEEE Transduction on Antenna and Topography, IEEE Transduction on Electromagnetic Compatibility, IEEE Antennas and Wireless Propagation Letters, IET Microwaves, Antennas and Propagation, IET Electronics Letters, and International Journal of RF and Microwave Computer Aided Engineering. His current research interest is metamaterial for 5G and future communication, millimeter wave. High gain beam stable meta antenna design, massive NEMO antenna design, meta surface and antenna applications, meta material absorbers and FSS, microwave imaging for biomedical applications, and microwave circuits. Dr. Singh is currently looking for self motivated researchers to work with exciting and challenging microwave and millimeter wave projects. Okay, now I welcome Dr. Amit Kumar Singh and all the participants. To join his session. Okay, I welcome you. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Sanji, for this. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Sanji, for this introduction. And uh, also, thank Dr. Amit Kumar Singh. Yeah, please. Dr. Amit Kumar Singh, if you have a little bit light, thoda hai na, aapka ka jo background hai, that is lighter. <laughs> so, your picture is. Uh, Actually, that is sun. So sun's light. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Then it's fine. Then it's fine. Then it's fine. Okay, okay. you can ca carry on, please. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to thank Professor Sarma and Dr. Sanjeev for uh, introducing me. And uh, again, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, the organizers to organize such interesting topic and the seminar for. Uh, uh, Generations which uh, uh, people are working in microwaves to make India one of the topmost uh, leader in the field, and that too under Prime Minister's call uh, for Atmanirbhar Bharat. So uh, what I am going to do today is uh, I am just uh, going to have some demonstration and some presentation, and now uh, I request uh, to allow me to share my screen now, and hence. Uh, uh, now I am going to start my presentation. So uh, after this introduction, as I told that today I am going to talk about antenna characteristic enhancement uh, by using metal material. So uh, I have used here a very interesting course like 5G and beyond. That is the future which we are looking for. And why we are looking for in the future that is in 5G and beyond is India has tremendous requirement of n number of applications 
n number of wireless services n number of bandwidth requirements and many more so we the people in india have n number of requirements basically related to the n order of generation of services so maybe 5g when it will come it may fulfill our requirement but it is a well known said that requirements are never fulfilled that's why the word here is 5g and so basically here i will be uh, telling in more detail today about antenna characteristics how these metal materials are going to be used to enhance those antennas now uh, as the topic itself comes into existence the question should arise like uh, why people need antenna characteristics but once uh, already designed the antenna they are required to go for the characteristics and once we have the proper justification for this then depending on the need what should be the solution and that how if we do the material this is one of the interesting point one of the interesting hello and one of the the, uh, your voice is not clear can you speak loudly in technical problem no uh, so i think little bit voice is slow <laughs> okay anyway so let us uh, try to go ahead with uh, now yeah. is yeah, audible okay. okay so in the meantime now i would like to go ahead with uh, you know, some of the my research content some of the my research interest which uh, we people in meta antenna lab iit jammu we are working in uh, so uh, our main research interests are uh, meta materials for 5g and future communication uh, millimeter wave high gain beam stable antennas massive memo antennas surface antennas uh, and uh, very interestingly we are also working on deployable high gain antenna for micro satellites uh, we are thinking to have one uh, for uh, our mars mission which upcoming mars mission we are also working on a metam tier absorber and fss uh, just sometime earlier we started working on microwave imaging for one medical applications currently uh, here one project is being uh, one project one to detect covid-19 virus by using microwave imaging and something similar kind of logics so uh, and later on the microwave circuits so may, uh, major details can be found about this particular group on this website meta antenna lab and here comes the content of uh, today's talk what we are going to talk about so first we are going to talk about fundamentals of meta material very small fundamentals not uh, exactly in the depth because today we have to go for antenna characteristic enhancement so we will talk more about antenna characteristics and how we can enhance those characteristics that will be our main motive for today so now first we will discuss fundamentals of materials followed by we will try to go for miniaturization of microstrip patch antenna now uh, why we have selected these uh, five or six topics is uh, out of uh, that let us go for the second one miniaturization of microstrip patch antenna the question here again is why we need miniaturization that is uh, one of the biggest question which an uh, electrical or electronic engineer or communication people talk about why we should do miniaturization there are n number of possible answers for this as well but as far as rf designers are concerned this miniaturization is to fulfill the user's requirement that means if some particular user wants uh, to have this uh, <coughs> to have this antenna set up uh, uh, to have this antenna set up to be like uh, 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 particularly miniaturized format in some dimension in some particular area 
accordingly we can have our uh, antenna size and antenna major requirements so uh, after that we can also we will also go for uh, sorry so followed by this we will also go for uh, high gain antenna using reflection type meta surfaces high gain antenna by using transmission type meta surfaces we will also go for uh, <coughs> instable high end antenna design. In the last, we will also try to discuss millimeter based antenna utilization. Now, if you will see the order of this content, we start. We are starting with miniaturization. We are going to achieve high gain. We are going to beam steering, and uh, in the last, we are going to have that is how a millimeter based antenna design. So these are the standardization of antenna or standard characterization of So in the similar manner now we are going to start. That is the fundamentals of metal. Just, just I will give here the minor introduction of the major introduction of the material is with the uh, so here as it comes. What is metamaterial as the first word itself? So the name metamaterial is made up of two particular words, meta and material. If you combine these two, you will have the word where meta means altered, change, or something higher or something beyond. So 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 what we can do here in much better way is so meta means something which is altered or changed or higher or beyond and material means the conventional materials so now what comes here is that is what are those metamaterials so metamaterials are something those materials in which uh, 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 the naturally existing properties such as permittivity permeability refractive indices which we have is uh, we can't have a natural. So this word metamaterial says those materials which are altered, those materials which are changed, those materials which are beyond the existing practical or natural material. So it means it is uh, 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 pretty sure that these metamaterials are going to be some engineered materials which will have some uh, uh, some extraordinary characteristics and uh, this particular one will have uh, uh, some uh, some it will have uh, n number of possibilities to have uh, controlled or tailored material properties like permittivity and so as far as the definition of beta materials are concerned, beta materials was coined in the late 90s. And as Professor David Smith, any material, any material which is composed of periodic microscopic structure so as to achieve a desired electromagnetic response, they can be written as beta materials. So, Professor Smith. थोड़ा सा ऊपर कर लीजिए आवाज बहुत स्लो आ रही है तो पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर सेइंग दैट द वॉइस इज नॉट क्लियर वॉइस इज नॉट क्लियर इज देयर एनी प्रॉब्लम विद माय माइक और या व्हेन यू टेक द माइक क्लोजर देन द वॉइस इज क्लियर सो मे बी आई विल हैव टू यूज माय हैंड लाइक या 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 नाउ नाउ द वॉइस इज परफेक्टली क्लियर Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, also. Uh, according to Professor Smith, any material which is composed of periodic uh, microscopic structure so as to achieve a desired electromagnetic response, they can be called the materials. But if you see, if you see this in particular, this is a very broad definition. So, in this very broad definition, how we can uh, categorize that, how we can miniaturize uh, uh, it, that is, other prefers to restrict the term metamaterial to materials with electromagnetic properties that are not found in nature. So, 
but almost all the researchers pretty agree that metamaterials don't really have to do anything with their chemical or atomic alterations so now the question again arises that if we don't have to do anything with chemical and atomic alterations of the particular material then how we can achieve this non natural or unnatural properties which we are saying a material that is called as metamaterial now the answers are a very well known answer that how we achieve those things like permittivity permeability and refractive indices that uh, how we can play with the uh, permittivity how we can control permeability how we can have the refractive index so the basic building block of these materials are something called as unit cells now what actually these unit cells are these unit cells are called as the sub atomic level fundamental blocks of this so just for understanding point of view we can also realize that these unit cells are something similar as atomic level uh, design atomic level distributions for simple material so what does it uh, what, what, this also signifies that a particular atom if it have some particular characteristics some particular orientation some particular magnetism electrical characteristic and other characteristic accordingly we can have the material design similarly here also if we design a particular unit cell as per our requirement the requirement can be in terms of uh, permittivity permeability or refractive index as per the application again depending on that we can uh, module this unit cell we can restructure this unit cell and we can have n number of its possible application at this time i am not going in depth that how we can control permittivity how we can control permeability how we can have refractive indices all these things control and what are the other uh, important characteristics of metamaterial that is very big story and have n number of significances and number of applications and phenomena what i am going to do here is i am going to discuss some of the important aspects in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, and my applications out of that the first one is miniaturization of microstrip pads and my using it as i told why we need miniaturization this concept comes as uh, uh, more laws all of you well know about that that uh, all the electronic circuits should be miniaturized as much as possible in some particular ratio so what a microwave people what we as communication engineer or rf people what our contribution towards this is out of that one is this miniaturization of rf circuits so in that the question comes that how we can miniaturize a patch after so uh, before going in depth in for this particular one um, uh, how we can do this miniaturization in that case uh, uh, we have to well know the fact that how the dimensions of the antennas are decided as a design so if for a designer point of view if some antenna is to be designed then how the physical and electrical dimensions of the patch antenna calculated and that can be analyzed in any of the software or environment practically saying how we can have the physical dimension of the antenna vector either by using some calculations or in the idea behind is patch antennas are also none other than rlc circuit combinations depending on your antenna design they can be arranged in some series or shunt combinations now here the question and the suggestion is if we have to reduce the size of the antenna what we can do so the answer comes like what antenna gives antenna have a number of characteristic out of that one is the resonant frequency 
how resonant frequencies are related to r l and c we have to recognize this thing so most of us may be knowing that resonant frequencies have a particular relationship with inductive and capacitive behavior of the circuit either this circuit is uh, your uh, ln says uh, uh, lumped element circuit or distributed circuit or microstrip circuit structure here so as i told resonant frequencies are related with its uh, inductive and capacitive behavior and of course in reverse manner so now the idea comes here is can we add some extra inductance and capacitance if let us say if we add some extra inductance and capacitance with our equivalent uh, microstrip patch and uh, circuit what it will do if we add some elements then due to inverse relationship frequencies can also be increased and decreased as per our requirement as per the combinations of elements so now one thing is clear that if we add some extra amount of elements then the frequency can be increased and decreased as per our requirement and this phenomena is particularly called as capacitive and inductive loading of this microstrip patch antenna by using microstrip structures now we are going to use the same topology by using metamaterial load so how we are going to load these metamaterials are by using some metamaterial unit cells at sometimes earlier i told metamaterials are none other than some materials which we tailor which we design by using uh, uh, some of the artificially engineered material out of that is uh, this the last unit cell if you can see some spiral some uh, annular ring structure if you can see i will also tell in depth that how these unit cells are designed what are the effect of uh, uh, its uh, serrations and its uh, metallic fingers and how what is the effect of this uh, 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 circular ring all these are completely the descriptions are available in this particular paper with ittl transactions as well so first what we did we have to have a simple microstrip patch and now and then what we did in second step is we loaded this by using some uh, uh, by some interdistal capacitors here why we did this thing again to reduce the uh, frequency and there are a number of possible opportunities here so and, and, and on the back side of this particular patch and now we have each this unit cell before that uh, part as a rf engineer we did is we also analyzed this uh, unit cells characteristic in terms of normal incidence and in terms of uh, inline incidence of em wave as well so here if you can see for each and every step step by step here the reflection characteristics simulated reflection char characteristics with respect to frequencies were plotted now uh, here actually the task is not only to miniaturize in this particular project the task is to miniaturize as well as to have multi band operations so again either to achieve miniaturization or to achieve multiple bands both of the phenomena are related to lnc's and their proper combinations so once this particular combination in rf circuits are achieved so we can have our desired multiple bands and similar thing we did and we achieved in this particular antenna set and in this particular antenna set our task is our task was to have a triple band antenna with a miniaturization of approximately 70% now if people are saying miniaturization this means miniaturize with respect to the conventional size of the available patch antenna operating at that particular frequency is not so what the, the, here if you can see these are the our finally designed antenna this is the top view and this is a back view so this is the top of the patch and this is the bottom of the patch if you can see the bottom is raised and here is the fabricated one 
So as it is uh, slightly east of the bottom side, so from here, uh, if you want to guess about the radiation characteristics and the reflection characteristics of these bats and plants, we can realize that since the ground plane is slightly east, it means there is possibility of back radiation as well. So from here as well, if you can see, uh, this patch antenna is loaded with interdigital capacitor and on the back MBCSRR, actually we have the name of this unit cell, modified double circular slot ring regulator. So the name um, as per uh, uh, recognition or as per understandings people can have its own. Here, if you can see here, I have plotted the reflection coefficient or reflection characteristic of the path simulated measure. Now, the very important part is this second uh, graph, which I have shown here, that is the circuit realization or the uh, 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 circuit realization of this uh, uh, microstrip patch and loaded with this There are n number of possible ways that how we can go for the circuit realization approach. Out of that, one can be used and the same can be presented here. So if you can see in this particular diagram, the uh, patch antenna is loaded with some RLC combination tank circuit and by, and by using that, the frequencies are being reduced and the antennas are being miniaturized. So here, one more uh, a pretty good application of the same antenna which we designed was a band eject or band pass filter. So here we have a triple band pass filter and that can be tuned as well. So here you can terminate the same one by using 50 ohm line here. And uh, again, if you can see the filter characteristic here, I have shown you the measured as well as the simulated graphs, S11 simulated and uh, S11 measured both. So here, if you can see, you can analyze. And these are the uh, uh, measured radiation parameters and radiation characteristics. As expected, it is uh, 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 two sided radiation from both sides, and uh, both sides have the significant gain. And ultimately, what was our task that we achieved here? That is the miniaturization of approximately 70%. So as I was saying that uh, what that's exactly miniaturization means, that means here our first frequency is 3.2 gigahertz. So corresponding to first resonant frequency 3.2 gigahertz, what is the conventional electrical size of the antenna required? Now, with respect to that particular antenna size, how much miniaturization is achieved? That is here approximately 70%, 68.83. And that is the actual meaning of miniature. <clears throat> but now uh, there is a problem with antenna also that uh, if you do a multiple number of aging kind of thing, if you do miniaturization of the antenna, then problem comes with the uh, gain of the antenna, that the gain of the antenna reduces. But now let us assume if uh, as a designer I need a uh, high gain as well as the miniaturized antenna. Then the question is, can we achieve this thing also? The answer is, of course, yes, we can. Then how to go for designing of high gain? Now from here, we are going to start this discussion. That is designing of high gain antenna by using meta surfaces. Now, first I will try to tell you what is meta surface actually. So in the introductory session, I told you what is exactly metamaterial. So metamaterials are some materials are those materials which is artificially designed or artificially tailored to have some uh, 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 characteristics of the material which is not existing practically. Those were metamaterials. And also I told you that time the metamaterials can be designed by using now, meta surfaces are if we place the arrangement of the unit cells in a plane or on a surface, two dimensional plane, then the design surface is two. Now, as I told you here in this uh, uh, particular slide itself, if you can see high gain antenna using reflection type meta surface. So, what does it mean, reflection type? Actually, when you are designing a meta surface, the surfaces can be of two types, resonant and non-resonant. So 
in any of the types of meta surfaces due to resonance or due to the characteristics of their circuit equivalent EM, when em wave in when em wave will incident on those particular surfaces they will get excited and depending on the amount or depending on the nature of the generated surface current from the unit cells they will have their load reflection and characteristics people can design their own transmission and reflection type of meta surface again the designing is similarly important as far as their uh, transmission and reflection characteristics are concerned so it is exactly similar in order of designing that how we can design a band pass filter and how we can design a band stop filter so dependingly we can also design reflection type and transmission type now here how we can design a high gain antenna by using a reflection type of surface so for this uh, uh, in this particular work, in this particular project, in this particular design, we have the concept of Fabry Parrot Capti Resonator and so basically I will tell you that uh, what exactly this Fabry Parrot uh, 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 open air Capti and is. So this diagram, if you can see on the top and on the bottom, if you can see on the bottom, we have the ground plane of the patch antenna and on the top there is some layer which is reflection type that's why we call this as reflection type meta surface why we have the reflection type is we want to create a cavity in between this ground and this reflection type surface this can be the perfect metal as well this reflection surface can be the perfect metal as well but what is the condition required here is in between these two metallic plates the cavity should be created in a way so that constructive interference condition should be achieved to achieve that phase matching condition there are two basic parameters required first parameter is this cavity height which gives the corresponding propagation phase to the em wave and second the phase or the reflection phase from the surface so to compensate that to achieve that phase from the reflecting surface the metal material unit cells can be designed as per the required phase required so if one designer needs theta naught and another designer needs theta one of reflection from some surface depending on the need or depending on the requirement of the reflection phase the proper unit cell in that particular frequency band so these are the basic analysis of this fabric error out of that first one is how effectively the cavity is designed second how critical this cavity height is or how critical the designing of this unit cell is and fourth how critical the phase matching is depending on this understanding we have designed we are going to have designing of fabric so as we want to design fabric parrot cavity resonator and so how many things we need we need first a microstrip radiator or a microwave radiator second thing we need is the metallic plates or the reflection plates reflection plate one reflection plate two in between this this antenna or this radiator so basically we need two things one the microstrip radiator and second the reflecting surface so our job is with both of them if we want to design the reflecting surface by using structures how we can design and if you, we have to have the radiator then now here uh, uh, our job is to design a high gain high aperture efficiency capture regenerator antenna for x band only so i have fixed my uh, uh, character 
uh, so I have fixed my requirement in XPAN. And here we have designed, I want to know, designed the reflecting surface for XPAN application. So for this purpose, as I told, we need two things. One is the microwave radiator and second is the reflecting surface. So to have this reflecting surface, we have to design again the microstrip uh, or the um, uh, meta surfaces, which is of reflection type. And as our application is in X band, so we have to design in X band. We designed a uh, 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 reflection type meta surface uh, by using DSR unit cell. What is this DSR unit cell? Is double annular slot ring resonator unit cell. The, again, complete designing part of this unit cell, including each and every circuit understanding, is available in the same public with AWPL and chips. <clears throat> so here I have this structure. You people, you designer, may have your own structure, but the condition should be satisfied. What condition should be satisfied? This should operate in your desired frequency band. This should have the proper phase matching condition as a designer point of view, and this should have proper bandwidth requirement. So, as we discussed sometimes earlier, yes, sir, uh, sir, when you are speaking, please keep your mic in front of your mouth so we can hear half of the sentence. We can hear half of the sentence. We cannot hear. This is the situation. So please uh, keep your mic on to the mouth. <clears throat> okay. So uh, this is the meter surface which was designed. These are the bandwidth requirements and uh, these are the other major facts. So as I told, uh, we need several things to have with uh, uh, to have with uh, uh, required meta structure. So here, if you can see the design microstrip antenna, simple microstrip antenna you know, operating in the X bands, and here we have the same design reflection type surface that we placed on the top of the microstrip radiator, and in between both the air gap which was created and the cavity was created, and this is the fabric cavity antenna which we are talking sometimes earlier. Now, to achieve many synchronization, to achieve many matchings, we may have n number of height variations, and accordingly, we can we can have our uh, reflection characteristic analysis. So here, if you can see the uh, microstrip patch and now with and without meta surface measured and simulated results, we have presented. Now. In this particular slide, if you can see the H plane and E plane radiation characteristic we have plotted. So from here, if you can analyze as compared to microstrip patch antenna, we are successfully able to achieve gain enhancement of about 11.85 dB in H plane and 12.5 in E plane that is observed at 10.18 gigahertz. So uh, while achieving the gain enhancement, if you can see with respect to the patch antenna, uh, 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 patch antenna 3 dB bandwidth, 3 dB beam width, it is reduced uh, with respect to the previous one. So as a concluding point of view from reflection type meta surface, what we observe is that um, uh, 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 it is observed that the proposed meta surface super straight can cause gain enhancement up to 11.85 dB in H plane and 12.5 dB in E plane at 10.18 gigahertz as compared to microstrip pattern. So when the gain was increased, we have also measured its uh, upper cell efficiency and that we got about 92.42% of the Gmax, where Gmax is the maximum gain uh, uh, due to the available aperture size. So one of the major limitations of this uh, February parrot cavity antennas are the narrow band. So now the challenge is that how we can increase this bandwidth. This bandwidth can also be increased. There are several number of possible options. One is by multiple stacking, multiple loading of the meta surfaces. And another one is to have some phase matching condition with the microstrip radiator itself. 
Now, this was uh, to deal with the reflection type metasurface. Now, here now we want to deal with the transmission type metasurface and how we can design a high length antenna. <coughs> So this is the lensing phenomena, uh, lensing action, which uh, just I have shown you in this diagram, and just I want to represent this particular thing. So designing a compact uh, near zero index metasurface lens with high aperture efficiency for antenna radiation characteristic enhancement. This particular one which we design. So a high gain aperture efficient uh, low profile compact near zero index metasurface was designed. How again? How these uh, types of meta surfaces can be designed? This itself is the main job, main research job. This particular one, we had a target to achieve about 97% of the 97% of the aperture efficiency. And uh, here, if you can see the material characteristics which I have shown you, mu epsilon and refractive index, the corresponding one. Here, if you can see the refractive index profile in the operating band, it's approximately due to zero. That's why this material is called as near zero index. The proposed metal material unit cell had simulated 3 dB transmission band from 8.47 gigahertz to 13 gigahertz with maximum resonance at 9.9. So uh, these are the measured and uh, simulated reflection and transmission band of the same surface, the transmission type surface which were fabricated. Now, in the next stage, what we did is to achieve maximum, maximum gain enhancement and to achieve maximum convergence phenomena, we did multiple stackings. And we have observed that when we are going to place uh, uh, three similar layers of metamaterials stacked together back to back, that is going to enhance the gain of the microstrip patch and now very high, and that is going to have a pretty, pretty, pretty high aperture efficiency as well. So, in the meantime, if we can see for this particular one, it is observed that the proposed meta surface lanes uh, that have a proper coverage in E and H plane that can cause gain enhancement of about. Uh, 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 about 10.70 dB and 11.67 dB in H and E plane. So total uh, calculated gain of this patch and now this meta surface lens is 15.49 dB and that too with 96.80% of gain. This work was also published and uh, achieving this much high aperture efficiency, this itself is a tough job and that is the job of that is the main engineering job. So here, if you can see, now uh, uh, we are very successful to achieve uh, order of gain enhancements either by using reflection type meta surface or by using uh, or by using uh, transmission type meta surface. So uh, in this particular case, uh, 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 the first problem we had was the size of the antenna, which we need, right? Now our second job was how we can achieve gain enhancement that we also achieved. Uh, uh, how we can use all such kind of dimensions that is again the main engineering job that uh, we have to show for. Now, another important aspect of the same is the beam steering phenomena, beam steering high gain enhancements by using graded index meta surface. This graded index is the very important concepts where people are applying artificial intelligence and machine learning to have this uh, graded index distribution on the surface and to achieve uh, 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 their uh, and to achieve the performance of antenna to enhance the performance of antenna. So there is there was a project where we worked on designing of wide angle beam stable high gain flat top beam antenna graded index. So actually the task being here is uh, 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 how we can design one antenna which can stand perfectly from let us say up from minus 50 degree to plus 50 degree in, ang in terms of angle. That is uh, how we can have a perfect antenna so design which can stand from minus 50 to plus 50 degree that too with very less gain degradation. Generally what happens is by using electronic switching or electronic uh, beam steering 
the gain of the antenna in some particular direction decreases very rapidly with time and that also causes some message loss or some information loss in terms of communications so that's why here the proposed is the flat top beam antenna wide beam scanning thick wide beam scanning capacity so in this case particularly if you will see again here we have designed uh, one unit cell again i will say people may have their own unit cell structures but the same unit cells should be justified properly that how the same bandwidth can be achieved how the same resonant frequency can be achieved how the transmission characteristic or reflection can be so for our job here we have designed a metamaterial unit cell which have 3 dB transmission bandwidth of about 4.75 gigahertz from 8.75 to 13.5 and that too with maximum that too with uh, maximum transmission at uh, uh, 10.10 gigahertz so the, these are the major uh, uh, characteristics of this unit cell now the important aspects comes that how we can design a graded index in computer so graded index the word itself signifies that what does exactly graded index means graded index says that the index of the material changes gradually so which index while talking about the properties or material properties of this uh, metal material refractive index so now we have to design a material where refractive index of the material changes gradually that is the meaning of we call it graded index and now how that can be designed there are n number of possible options but again all those possible options start with designing a proper unit cell so a proper unit cell so if a proper unit cell if it have a wide phase variation wide phase distribution then only proper graded index for so here what i have shown you here i have taken one standard unit cell and here i did some changes in their dimensions and due to changes in their dimensions what you can see is you have the changes in their transmission and reflection characteristics respectively in their phase also now while saying changes in a while while saying changing in their dimension what the changing dimension is doing is the changing in dimension is going to change the surface current so once surface current distributions are going to be changed this particular surface current distribution will generate its own reflection and transmission a reflection or transmission characteristic due to that the resonant frequency the same thing will happen now if we recall the refractive index characteristic refractive index depends on and all these three characteristics depends on transmission and reflection characteristic so indirectly if we can have the modulated transmission and reflection characteristics of the surface then we can also have the modulated uh, refractive index with modulated other characteristics of the surface so depending on the on that we have uh, Amit sir, voice is again breaking. So here are the design here panel versions of the graded index surface, and here if you can see the proper beam steering and uh, other uh, uh, gain related phenomena, you can see. Make sure how the Voices are audible or not? So it is a uh, from the major results. It can be observed that uh, movement of the surface in some particular steps causes uh, beam steering by 10, 30, and particular degree correspondingly. And these are the some of the major uh, 
uh, some of the major applications of these radiators are not only this uh, kind of movement on the top of the radiator causes uh, something called as uh, beam steering from left to right or any other manner here if the same surface is rotated in some angular manner at some particular fixed point then also it can cause the beam steering from my that also we achieved in this major one here in the, the in the next sequence series here we have designed a radial graded image in the surface if you can see the same is uh, uh, the designing sequence this is the fabricated one and the same one, is placed on the, the top of the acoustic cancer indicator and the simulated and measured beam characteristic on the radiator. So finally, finally, 12 mm in steps of 12 mm movement causes beam steering of 10 minus 20 and 42 degrees. Now, our main job was, as I told, that we had to have to design the flat top beam antenna. So, the designing of this flat top beam antenna by using graded index is surface. So, here, if you can see, the arrangement of this antenna setup on the on the bottom side we have the microstrip patch antenna radiator on just its top we have the linear graded index meter surface and on the top most we have the radial graded index meter surface the linear graded index meter surface causes some far field transitions the rgims the radial graded index meter surface causes near field Phase transformation of the LGIM meter surface lens antenna, and the combination of these two surfaces placed on the top of this radiator causes the radial as well, uh, particular phase distribution on the surface, which corresponds to the flat top beam characteristic. Now, if you will see the gain characteristics, that is the uh, uh, radiation characteristic of the same antenna. This is the main one, and this is a zoomed version of the same plot. Here, if you can see, it can be observed that placing RGIMS over LGIMS lens causes beam steering or beam flattening of 33 degree with 1 dB gain variation from minus 15 degree to 18 degree. This characteristic we are talking about. Flattening. Now, due to linear movement of LGIMS gain enhancement with beam flattening of 58 degree that is from minus 8 to 60. See this blue characteristic. So it's from minus 8 to 60. So one side movement causes beam scanning from minus 8 to 50 degree with this flat formation. That is a gain variation of 1 degree. That was our main job, our main challenge to achieve. So that that thing we achieved. Now, again, further we extended our uh, uh, further we extended our work in the same field, and that was uh, like uh, to design uh, next generation LGIMS that where we can have uh, some beam scanning from minus 50 to plus 50 degree, and that too with very very less gain variation, and that in this case next LGIMS uh, we have which we have designed is moved to some particular position and LGMS is rotated in clockwise direction. And from there, we, we can observe that antenna beam can be steered with beam flattening of 96 degrees. That was one of the challenges we job. So now by using this antenna, we are very are successful in achieving beam scanning from minus 48 to plus 48 degrees. And that too, with very less gain variation, that is a gain variation of about maximum of one. And that is one of the beauty of this particular design. That's why the same was published in the transactions and results are very well known. And the same was patented also. Ultra thin, low profile, linear, and radial grid index meta surface, which we designed successfully. And we have achieved this uh, 96 degree beam scanning in our band. Now, 
as per being in time is also important so in the last in the same series millimeter wave antennas using metal cables so these are some of the uh, massive nemo antenna characteristics and their requirements now i am directly coming to the uh, 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 designing section of uh, millimeter wave antenna by using the materials so deciding of the meta surface lanes for k band prop antenna now here if you can see here we have designed some meta surface some particular arrangement again some unit cells with some slotting and here here why we have such kind of arrangement is again answer is to fulfill our requirement while saying to fill, fulfill our requirement is the answer comes as that what band we need, what type of surface we need, and uh, what kind of uh, 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 quality factor we need, depending on that, this unit cells design is happening. Only the change at this time is, at this time the change is this, uh, this uh, uh, prop antenna radiator if you will see here uh, at the place of microwave radiator uh, uh, simple at the place of simple microstrip patch antenna what we use is this probe antenna this is not a single probe antenna this is a dual pole probe antenna if you see when i will show you the hardware of the same fabricated one like uh, this one if you can see here we have the feedings both sides and both are aligned with the same so both one horizontal polarized another one vertical polarized both can be controlled this is the this is the fabricated meta surface which we have which we designed and by placing on the top of this meta surface by on the top of this meta surface high gain and again beam scanning was achieved for 5g application the good quality of this particular antenna setup which we designed is this this particular antenna is self-sufficient to be operated in 28 gigahertz 5g band as well as 24 gigahertz of the 5g band and the gain of this particular 5g antenna which we designed by using meta surface and this probe antenna radiator is about 20 dbi and why we uh, design, why we did this project is uh, to design uh, a 5G measurement chamber. So we specialized 5G by using this uh, bipolar, bipolar nature HM parameter. So in the same sequence, if I would like to explore a bit more in the same sequence, one of the work with uh, my Korean group is this. Uh, 5G planar lanes that is uh, to convert far field, uh, uh, far field quint zone to near field quint zone by using uh, uh, 5G lens itself. So here, if you can see in the block, the design 5G lens, millimeter lens, and the antenna which is radiating particular type of band. So again, here by using this uh, far field plot, if you can see. The cylindrical waves are converted into the plane wave fronts, and that was the major, major requirement and uh, major uh, 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 consideration by going through this project. In the same sequence, hopefully the last one. Here also, one of them you can see the uh, actually it's a eight port, uh, uh, one into eight port five uh, G antenna that is so. Uh, operating at uh, 28 gigahertz band so here if you can see the arrangement of the radiators so we have the eight radiators and in the front of these eight radiators here we have the conical conformal meta surface and that is going to have high gain here if you can see without the surface this gain is about 10 to 12 dpi with this conical conformal surface, the gain of the antenna set which we design is by using this 56 way power divider and 1 to 8 multi stage power divider. It's going to be that is some that is one of the work which is for massive.
So here I have shown you the directory of the works started from 3 gigahertz to up to 50 gigahertz. So again, the question and the comments are only that at what frequency we have to design, what we have to design, which characteristic we have to optimize, and which characteristic we have to enhance. Depending on these characteristics and depending on the requirements, we can have the controlled or we can have the designs, lens, and setups. So to verify that, if you can just see this uh, this conformal metasurface setup, here we have slightly different type of menu cells. On the top, if you can see the two uh, uh, the two uh, rectangular patches, they club together to form the unit cell combination and to form the unit cell combination. Now, in every direction, uh, 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 there is one radiator, and uh, there is only one input source, and from there we have used the multi-stage power divider. So. 56 way power divider we design and this this is a pretty good job which uh, we did uh, particularly at 28 the same was also implemented for uh, 38 gigahertz band as well so that's all from my side so thank you for listening if you have questions if you have queries if you have suggestions that are welcome from my side uh, amit sir good afternoon uh, amit sir uh, sir, I have a question, sir. Problem technical? Uh, sir, yes, a technical. I have a question, sir. Oh, please. Uh, sir, uh, for all your work, uh, which simulator you use, sir, uh, for uh, meta material and uh, meta surface and uh, the works which are shown over here, sir? Uh, particularly, I use three types of four types of simulation tools. One is the CST, which you people will know. HFSS, you people also will know. I do same job in MATLAB. So there are n number of softwares available in which you people can do the same thing. Uh, uh, particularly your uh, uh, your software, sir. Particularly you use the software. CST, HFSS, but mostly I use MATLAB. Nowadays okay. I use MATLAB. Previously it was uh, CST. Sorry to interrupt you. I think uh, it is. I am sort of from IIT BHU, sir. My question is that, uh, so in case of uh, refraction type meta surface, so what will be the optimum height that you choose for phase match matching conditions? Means uh, it is lambda by four, or by which parameter it is decided? The moderator can take the question one by one. That would be better. Otherwise, there would be lots of noise and chaos. Take the card. So uh, uh, maybe I am answering the question. Like uh, as I told, uh, in case of reflection type meta surface, the height and its uh, critical dimension is very important. Why I said is uh, to achieve phase matching condition. Now there is uh, not such a uh, well said condition that it should be lambda by two. Or so the question is how much it should be? It may be lambda by two, maybe four, and that depends on designer. Designer means, for let us say if I have to design, then depending on the constraints given to us, that is, let us say if you have space requirement, your antenna should not be too much wider. Then you have to opt a method by which the thickness, by which the height of cavity should be less than lambda y4 also, that may be less than lambda y8 also. That you have to achieve this. Now question comes, how you will achieve this? The phase matching condition will be given by the reflecting surface. So let us say, 
if the reflecting surface is giving some particular reflection phase, some theta naught. Now, to fulfill the complete phase requirement, let us say you need theta one. Then the gap in between theta naught to theta one, how you will compensate either by using some uh, uh, artificial, some kind of design on the antenna structure or on the surface or in between. This is the job of the design. Finally, there is no any constraints like lambda by four. So, so then the, what is the value of theta one minus theta naught? It is uh, one eighty degree. Or something else. So, um, that is a constructive phase condition. So, uh, just jump like if you have two electromagnetic waves coming. Depending, both of them may have some different may phase. Have some may have theta one one may have theta one theta two. Then for both of the EM waves, what is the phase matching condition to achieve constructive interference? This you have to satisfy only. That may be 180, that will depend on the theta 1, theta 2 values, which you have. Okay, I'm taking the questions from the chat box. From the chat box. Okay. Okay, okay the question is from Vidya Keshwani. That what is the difference? What is the difference? Between material and electromagnetic. If too many echoes are coming, so I could not understand the question. Mm, so next question is by Praveen Chaurasia. So why we why are we also discussing also discussing dispersion curve for metamaterial and what information would we collect from dispersion information would we collect from respect to metamaterial? Okay, so the significance of this part of the here is uh, to recognize the frequency gap or to recognize the frequency band in which your designed unit shell will operate perfectly. See, the, uh, this dispersion diagram is important in some particular aspect. So let us say if you have to design some filters or some uh, uh, planar microwave circuits, then identifying or recognizing the dispersion diagrams are good. But at the same time, if you are designing or if you are having some interfaces which is going to play important role with the far field radiators with the same. Either in terms of in fire direction or in broadside direction, where the requirement of dispersion diagram is not so. Why I am saying like this is so depending so that depending on your requirement, you should see the understanding of the dispersion. For this, the di the word itself is not sufficient. The question the, your understanding should be that how actually this person diagram happens or how actually this person diagram becomes a unit. That is how the interaction of EM with which unit will happen particularly when you are simulating. That is the exact Hello. So particularly saying this person diagram gives you the frequency. Okay, so you have... oh, yeah, please. From uh, that patch antenna size may be reduced, but cavity size is large. Then please tell what is the advantage of this advantage of meta surface aperture? Is it, uh, audio is not uh, could not. Uh, Amit sir, getting me? Yeah, now your, getting me, please. Sanjeev, Sanjeev, your voice is coming with echo. That's why he's not getting the. Uh, actual question. Okay, so patch and dinner size may be reduced, but cavity size is large. Then what is the advantage of this advantage of meta surface aperture? So answering to this question is actually just uh, 
before the last question to last question we answered like uh, cavity size can also be controlled as per the requirement let us say if we want to have our cavity size less than lambda by 4 or about lambda by 8 that can also be performed let us assume if the thickness of the patch is 0.7 or 0.8 mm or something like that and that is giving a gain of maximum to 5 dB or 6 dB now if by placing surface on the top with the thickness of a, a, a cavity height of let us say about uh, cavity height of about lambda y 10 or lambda y 8 if the gain is about uh, 15 20 dpi then yes in terms of gain you have to sacrifice some so if you want to have high gain have to place the surface on the top and the cavity you can miniaturize as well so cavity height is not at all a problem amit sir your voice is again breaking so i said uh, cavity height yes yeah, the next question is okay is, yeah yeah, please so carry on, carry on. next question is it required to excite metabolic instructions to achieve mu and epsilon in addition to patch radiator could not get question what they want to ask is it required to excite metamaterial structure to achieve negative mu and epsilon in addition to patch radiator okay so the easiest answer to this is uh, the meta structures or meta surfaces are uh, completely passive elements until unless there is nothing with there is no any kind of energy and power incidenting on them these structures can't do anything at that time those structures are none other than zero so it is exactly like a filter which you design either band pass or band stop this filter can work only if you provide the minimum threshold then only that particular filter will work exactly in the similar manner to operate to work with that particular surface meta surface you have to excite the surface next question please Okay, so next question is, who once can decide the height between MCA radiator and metasurface? Oh, oh, please repeat. Who can decide the height between MCA radiator and metasurface? Two parameters can decide. The first parameter is uh, the phase of the surface. The reflection phase of the surface and the second one the propagation phase of the em wave in between the cavity okay so next question is is meta surface unit cell are printed on both side or single side again you can print on both sides or single sides as well again that depends on your design that is uh, uh, as suitable as you design the unit cell that can be both sides as well that can be single sided as well mm, so this one more question how artificial meta resonators possesses different value permittivity and permeability which phenomena takes place so that so for this maybe you people have to understand the basics of this uh, meta material that is uh, how the electrical characteristics like permittivity and permeabilities are being achieved so uh, either in terms of electrical resonance or magnetic resonance 
that can be answered very well. So uh, uh, if you have the inductive phenomena with you, then can be answered with uh, electrical parameters like permittivity or similarly the permittivity. The, uh, there are n number of uh, understandings for this. So that is one of the basic physical understanding. Mm, so the last question is, why metal surface dielectric substrate is higher and antenna radiate substrate is lower? Okay. So again, uh, uh, why it is on the top is uh, we have to manipulate the radiated waves from the pan. And that too, that too in broadside direction. That's why we placed the super straight on the top of the radiator. Let us say if you have one antenna which radiates in some plus theta, some minus theta, some plus 90, some minus 90 degree directions as well, that is the omnidirectional antenna kind of, you can have the kind of metasurfaces design which you can place on the top as well as on the bottom. So again, my answer is the same. In which direction you want to manipulate the EM waves and what do you want to achieve from this EM wave? Depending on this, the surfaces can be placed either on the top or on the bottom. Any other question or okay, comments? Sir. That's all the from my side. Okay, now I would for such a vibrant talk and we can just solve all the queries of the participants and we have just been given a glance of the capti resonator antenna and metamaterial substrate, high gain antenna with metamaterial meta surface lens. Year zero index, metal surface lens, metal surface lens design, beam stable, high gain antenna, using gridded index metal surface, millimeter gain antenna, using meta materials, conformal antenna. So, in the very short span of time, you have covered so much topics, so many topics there. And I speak on behalf of all the IP party sections, APS chapter, Japo, and government women engineering community, and for giving us such a nice talk. And hope will we will all meet clear. Okay, so thank you for my uh, I'm always ready to solve at any time. So thank you again. Ready to solve at any time. So thank you again. Everyone, thank you. But in tomorrow morning, in the next session of Professor Sintek Kang, okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you, participants. Meet you tomorrow morning. Meet you tomorrow morning.